Warning, this video might be disturbing to those who like Windows and Microsoft products. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome back. So the other day I was helping my friend install Microsoft Windows and we came across a screen that, let's just say, violates your user freedoms. So let's take a look. This is the screen you will come across when you first start installing Windows. And a lot of you are going to be tempted to click on this here button, this express button. Holy shit, don't do that. It's definitely a trap to leave the default Microsoft key loggers enabled by default. Do not leave these settings enabled if you are a Windows user. So what is the right thing to do on the screen? Well, you gotta go to that customized settings. Hopefully it's your computer and not like managed by the IT department. <laughs> Once you click on that customized settings, you're greeted with this screen, page one of two, I might add. But let's go ahead and start with that top setting. Personalize your speech, typing, and inking input by sending contacts and calendar details along with your associated input data to Microsoft. Okay, well, first off, um, it's very tied to the second setting, which is send typing and inking data to Microsoft to improve the recognition and suggestion platform. Between these two settings, it's a key logger. I had to Google what the hell inking data is. From what I can tell, it's touch and stylus input data. So it's basically asking to send your key inputs and your touch inputs and your mouse inputs to Microsoft. Uh, I kind of want to go over why they even want to do this. They're shifting away from selling their OS to selling you, selling your data. And this is how they're getting your data. This stupid screen here. And mind you, this is just what they let you turn off. The third setting basically says, I want to let Microsoft track me using an ID across a bunch of different apps. This is a bad idea in conjunction with the key loggers, which then can find your identity based on, I don't know, when you typed your name and credit card details and holy shit, why is this legal? What happens if you input medical documents? Then you've got some frickin' HIPAA shit in your keylogger data. I don't know how this is even legal, but it's here, and it's common, and it's default, and that means most people, at least 80% of people, have these settings enabled. That's truly disgusting. Location. This is something Google has got a lot of flack for recently. Tracking where you are and then selling where you are to local people who will then send advertisements to you because you're local. That's cool and whatever. No, it's not. They have a database that's tracking your whereabouts, and if you don't unselect this, they will continue to track your whereabouts to the best of their ability and sell it to the highest bidder. Their trusted partners. It's the highest bidder. Page two. Okay. The one setting that I actually strongly recommend you leave on is use smart screen online services to help protect against malicious content and downloads in sites loaded by Windows browsers and store apps. This is actually just an edge feature and a, and a store feature that has web views in it. So um, what this actually does, I read their documentation it downloads a list of essentially blacklisted uh, websites and does local checks to see if they are potentially malicious based on that list. It's really not anything that bad. It's just downloading a giant list of URLs to your computer. So I actually recommend you leave that one enabled because it's not giving Microsoft any additional information. But do don't, that's not going to be useful at all in Chrome. So if you're going to use Chrome anyway, you might as well turn it off. Um, save some disk space, at least. 
Use page prediction to improve reading, speed up browsing, and make your overall experience better for Microsoft browsers. So Microsoft found out that their Edge browser is slower, and to make it look faster, they've added prediction capabilities where it uploads all of your browser history to a Microsoft server, and then that server decides what you're gonna click on next, and then it tells your web browser to load it before you've clicked on it. What? Two things. One, why the actual fuck is it not local? Why is it uploading data anywhere? And two, load shit when I click on it. Not before, we're wasting battery, CPU cycles, computer lifetime on things I'll never see. It's a bad feature, covering up a bad performing web browser. I turn it off and use Chrome, or if in my case, I prefer Firefox because it's a better browser, at least better for the world. So use Firefox. Okay, so the next two are about connecting to the interwebs. I don't really think that's too bad. You can leave them active, leave them not active. I don't really give a shit. Um, that bottom one though, send error and diagnostic information to Microsoft, I would definitely deselect that for a reason. Sending an application crash or dump is going to be the RAM or the memory that that program is using. Don't you think the RAM or memory your programs use might have your personal data in it? Yeah, 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 it does. It does indeed. Now, that's not super indexed or highly searchable by Microsoft, so they're probably not using that data. Probably not using that data. But even so, I don't want to give them the opportunity to. And secondly, there's so many users of this platform who have already gone with that express settings that the, the crash reports are probably going to make it in any way. If the ELC crashes on your machine, there's no need to freak out and be like, go to send an error report. Because Bob down the road had the same problem and it's already fixed because 10,000 users had the same problem. Anyway, um, that's, that's what I had for today. 